Hello and welcome to Prime at 9. I'm Muamun La and you're watching Home Build TV. First news and headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated the new integrated terminal building of the Maharaja Bir Bikram Airport during his visit to the state of Tripura. Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated and laid the foundation stone for 22 developmental projects worth over Rs 4,800 crores in Infal on Tuesday. Modi said that palm oil mission will help increase the income of the farmers in the northeast. Amid surge in COVID-19 cases, consultant physician of Helvetia Medical Center Dr. S. Chandra on January 4 said that the third wave won't be as severe as the second wave. Top brass of bureaucrats from the Ministry of Home Affairs are on a visit to the Northeast region to discuss and resolve interstate conflicts, informed a senior MHA official on Tuesday. And now news in details. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday inaugurated the new integrated term terminal building at Maharaja Bir Bikram Airport in Tripura's Agartala. The Prime Minister also launched key initiatives, Mukhya Mantri Tripura Gram Samriti Yojana and Project Mission 100 of Vidya Joyti Schools in a seat. According to a statement issued by the Prime Minister's office, the new integrated terminal building of Maharaja Bir Bikram Airport built at a cost of about Rs 450 crore is a state-of-art building spread over 30,000 square meters, having modern facilities and supported by the latest IT network integrated system. PMO stated that the project mission 100 of Vid Vidya Joyti schools is aimed to prove, improve the quality of education in the state by converting 100 existing higher secondary schools to Vidya Joyti schools with state-of-art facilities and quality education. The project will cover about 1.2 lakh students from nursery to class 12 and will cost around Rs 500 crores in next three years. Mukhya Mantri Tree Program Samriti Yojana aims to achieve the benchmark standards for service delivery in core development sectors at the village level. The key sectors selected for this Yojana are household tap connections, domestic electricity connections, all weather roads, functional toilets for every household, recommended immunization for every child, participation of women in self-help groups, etc. The scheme is expected to induce a sense of healthy competition among the villagers to improve the service delivery at grassroots level. Union Civil Aviation Minister Joyti Raditya Sindhya, Tripura Chief Minister Biplap Kumar Deep, and Deputy Chief Minister Vishnu Deb Burman were present at the event. Connectivity ka dusra upahar mission. 100 Vidya Jyoti schools ka aur teesra uprar Tripura Gram Samruddhi Yojana ka aaj saikro karod rupiye ke projects ka lokarpan aur chilanyaat yaha hua hai aap sabhi ko in tino hi upaharo ke liye bahut bahut badhai साथियों 21वीं सदी का भारत सबको साथ लेकर सबके विकास और सबके प्रयास से ही आगे बढ़ेगा कुछ राज्य पीछे रहे कुछ राज्य के लोग मूलभूत सुविधाओं के लिए तरसते रहे ये असंतुलित विकास राष्ट्र के विकास के लिए उचित नहीं है, ठीक नहीं है। Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday slammed previous governments for leaving Manipur on its own and said that he has brought the BJP-led centre to the seat's doorsteps. 
lauding the people of Manipur for forming a stable government in the state. PM Modi said 60% of households in Manipur have got access to clean tap water through the Hargar Jal program, reflecting the commitment of the double engine government. PM Modi inaugurated and laid the foundation stones of several developmental projects at Manipur today. The Prime Minister said that he has seen commendable success in various areas and the present decade of 21st century is going to be very crucial for Manipur. Modi further stated that stability has to be maintained while taking the state to the top of the development, which can only be done by the double-engine government. Prime Minister Narendra Modi alleged that Manipur was turned into a blockade state by the previous government at centre, and his government have changed that completely. He further alleges that some people are using people of Manipur to gain power, but glad that the people of Manipur have identified such faces. मैं एयरपोर्ट से उतरा एयरपोर्ट से यहां तक आया करीब आठ दस किलोमीटर का रास्ता पूरी तरह मणिपुर के लोगों ने भर दिया रंग दिया एक प्रकार से पूरी ह्यूमन वॉल आठ किलोमीटर की ह्यूमन वॉल ये सत्कार ये आप ये आपके कभी भी कोई भूल नहीं सकता है आप सभी को वर्ष 2022 की बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं जिस नॉर्थ ईस्ट को नेताजी ने भारत की स्वतंत्रता का प्रवेश द्वार कहा था वो आज नए भारत के सपने पूरे करने का परे प्रवेश द्वार बन रहा है A huge fire damaged the Chakasang Mission Center Church in Futsuro on Monday morning. The incident brings to four questions about safety, municipal infrastructure, fire services in the undeserved areas, roads and the condition of fire and emergency services in Nagaland in general. In today's bulletin, we will discuss some of these issues with our senior news analyst, El Nguli, who can give us more perspectives. So, El, this uh, the Futsuro fire incident has brought this huge um, instances to light on the surface, um, and that is the lack of proper emergency uh, services in the state. So, can you first please highlight us on this issue? Uh, yeah. We have had a lot of uh, major fire incidents in Naglin, even in the previous years. And even recently at Kermahal, we had a very, very big fire. And I think by the recent counts that we have, I think more than 200 houses or uh, kacha houses were destroyed in the fire. Now the case of Fusero, uh Mission Church uh, is a little different from the urban area fire incidents that we have been having. On Monday morning, it was during the wee hours that fire broke out from the church and authorities are saying that it might be related to short circuit, electrical short circuit. It might be related to something related to electricity and not something that was very deliberate. Anyhow, uh, the issue here is, uh, Major, a major township, a major township like Futsoro not having a fire station. Uh, but wh by what we know, it takes about three to, two to three hours from Peck to reach Futsoro. And that's, that's a very, very long distance for any fire, fire personnel to reach. By the, by the time they reach the place, I do not believe that they will be able to handle any fire incident or God forbid, you know, if there were human casualties, I think things would have been much, much worse. But um, unfortunately, this is not only the case in Futsuro, but everywhere in Naglin because of the way fire services in Naglin is organized. Then can you tell us how important is uh, good road connectivity when it comes to providing proper uh, emergency services in the state? Yeah, uh, I think the importance of good roads, good road connectivity, especially in the urban and rural areas, is something that we cannot understate. We cannot afford to understate it. It is very important. The first thing here is 
a well-planned route network is very important for firefighters because it offers them very fast and efficient, re efficient response during uh, cases of fire. Uh, I would like to narrate a story here way back in early 2000. Um, there was a very, very big fire at railway colony. I think it was way back 2005, 2006, yeah. And I remember going there with the reporters. And even as we were approaching the site of the fire, at railway colony, we could still hear the uh, the firefighters. They were still stuck up there behind behind the railway lines. There's a small approach road. Bec they've been there for more than an hour, and the and the colony has been burning for more than one and a half hours now. And they couldn't go do anything about it because there was no road going in. There was no road, and all the little little alleys and the passages that went inside the colony were packed by people by curious people by people wanting to see how fire looks you know and the fire personnel could not go in later on they started blaming i think some people started blaming the firefighters you came late you did not respond early and all that but at the end of the day, it is about passage and connectivity. Good roads offer efficient and faster response for emergency teams to reach you in case of emergencies. Then this situation happened in Futsuro, and tomorrow it can happen to any one of us. Yes, so I mean. in situations uh, where the um, fire department doesn't reach the location on time, what options does the public has, have? Uh, unfortunately, I mean, we don't have much o o much options here because in the absence of proper fire services in our areas, at least we are in Dimapur, Kohima, Moshong, I think they have proper fire services at least to serve uh, the municipal areas. But if we, go, if we go a little further beyond the main townships into the rural areas and even in the subdivisions, uh, I think uh, fire services will be lacking there. And the situation will be a little more difficult for people there in case some kind of an emergency come uh, emergency comes up now uh, relating to the options that we have in case we don't have proper infrastructure for firefighting we don't have proper fire fire services in our area we don't have much options except to take care i think uh, it is advisable if we no, if we can use fire alarms too, if we can regularly check the wirings in our homes at least, you know, and if we could have a small community agency that can take care of emergencies such as uh, fire incidents, uh, I am told that by the time uh, the fire services reached uh, the church in Fasoro, uh, I think the fire had already destroyed the building, something like that, because the road was so bad even though the fire services could somehow reach the place, it was very it was very late. So we don't have much options. We cannot always depend on fire services from uh, 64 kilometers away to come and reach us if something happens. So I think the best options we have right now is setting up fire alarms, checking our electrical wirings at home regularly, and setting up community health groups uh, to respond in time of emergencies. Amen. Okay. Lastly, El, can you tell us what could be the best steps to avoid situation like this from happening again? Yeah, uh, I think it's practically the uh, few options that I've mentioned only now. However, I think community organizations and group can come together, they can work together on a plan and I think maybe they can approach the authorities to set up a fire service station in their areas, for example, especially in the underserved areas. We were talking about Fusaro, but there are a lot of places in Nagaland that do not forget fire services. They don't even have proper electricity uh, facilities. So the best options, uh, option right now we have is to uh, uh, engage in a community agency Come up with an uh, come up with an agency that can represent themselves and their need to have fire services in their area, and approach the govern government. Uh, one of the most unfortunate things about uh, fire services in the country, not only Nagaland, in the country, is that it is one of the worst organized government organizations in India. Even the Director General of Fire Services of India itself says. 
it is one of the it is one of the most unorganized organizations in India. It has huge shortage of man manpower. You need about five lakhs fifty seven thousand workers, uh, firefighters in India. We have only about total approximately fifty four thousand. We have about 90% so shortage. We have about 70% shortage in firefighting equipment. And we don't have personnel who can develop in the organization in firefighting skills, in new firefighting paradigms, who can grow up on the, uh, who, who can grow in the services. So we have a lot of problems here. But right now, uh, uh, I don't want to veer away from the question. Right now, the only option is to just engage in co community and engage with the government in setting up at least a semblance of fire services within our urban areas, village, subdivisions. Amen. Okay, thank you so much for your information. Thank you, Amen. This was our news analyst, Sir L, on lack of proper emergency services in Nagaland. And now moving on to the next news, Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated and laid the foundation stone for 22 developmental projects worth over rupees 4,800 crores in Infal. Manipur on January 4th, speaking at the inaugural event, PM said today India is importing a huge amount of palm oil and spending thousands and crores of rupees on it. The government wants India to be Atma Nibar Bharat, he said. Once it has come up with rupees 11,000 crore, Palm oil mission that will help increase the income of the farmers in the northeast, he said. The people should remember how the previous government met Manipur a block at state and played politics to break the public unity, he said. Efforts of double engine government made sure there is no fire of militancy and insecurity but the light of peace and development, PM added. Amid surge in COVID-19 cases, consultant physician of Helvetia Medical Center, Dr. S. Chandra, on January 4, said that the third wave won't be as severe as the second wave. India seems to be at the beginning of the third wave, and although cases are rising, the mortality rate is still very low, he added. Unfortunately, we seem to be at the beginning of the uh, of the third wave, you know, because the cases are rising uh, regularly. Uh, unfortunately, there, there doesn't seem to be a slowing down of the rise and the rise is exponential. So I would say, yes, we are at the beginning of the third wave. And uh, however, uh, I would also say that on a more optimistic note, that although, although the cases are rising exponentially, I still notice the mortality rate being regular. So I don't see an exponential rise in the mortality rate. I believe in the last two to three days, if we follow back on the number of deaths in India, it's been about 123 the day before yesterday and 124 yesterday. And we are seeing about 37,000 or 38,000 um, cases, I think, on a daily basis yesterday, in fact, the last 24 hours. So... Probably, yes, we are at the beginning of a third wave, but somehow I, you know, I, I believe that it's not as severe as the second wave as of now. The top brass of bureaucrats from the Ministry of Home Affairs are on a visit to the Northeast region to discuss and resolve interstate conflicts, informed a senior MHA official on Tuesday. The official confirmed that the Home Secretary, along with the Intelligence Bureau Chief and heads of the other security units, have gone to the Northeast region where he will hold a meeting with other stakeholders to discuss interstate conflict, clashes between rival police forces and armed forces special power sect. During the visit, he will chair several meetings with heads of security forces and other stakeholders to resolve disputes among states in the Northeast region, he said. Government's main objective is to maintain normalcy in the region, he said. After a botched up operation by Assam rifles that led to the death of 13 unarmed civilians, the MHA had formed a five member committee to look into the withdrawal of the Armed Forces Special Powers Act from the Northeastern State. In a bid to move towards environmental conservation, the Northeastern Railway Zone of Indian Railways has electrified more than 75% of its routes. Northeastern Railway Zone, primarily being a passenger-oriented system, has positioned itself as one of the prominent zones in providing safe, secure, faster, 
comfortable and reliable transportation facility to the public during 2021. According to information received, NER zone would become almost 100% electrified railway by the end of this year 2022. It also informed that after electrification of main routes, the expenditure on high-speed diesel has been considerably reduced, registering a saving of Rs 361 crores. Working on green energy, NER has started as CUF, Capacity Utilization Factor, Best Solar Monitoring System the previous year, which has resulted in 26% higher solar energy generation as compared to the corresponding period of last year with the same installed capacity of 4.72 MWP. As many as 60 students of Patiala Medical College have tested positive for COVID-19 on Tuesday. Following this, the Patiala District Administration and Health Department held a meeting. Sunday Pans, Deputy Commissioner said the government has imposed night curfew in the state till January 15. The medical college will also remain closed till that that, he said. He further said the medical report of the students is yet to be complete. However, he requested the people to maintain social distancing and wear masks in public places. In the state, schools and colleges will remain closed till January 15, he said. Meanwhile, Prince so the civil surgeon said the third wave of COVID-19 is here and people should avoid going to crowded places. लाइकली हो उम्मीद यही है क्योंकि बहुत तेजी ना फैल रहा है ये उम्मीद करो नहीं क्या तो ये ना दी जीनोम सीक्वेंसिंग वास्ते टेस्ट वास्ते पे जा है का वो जो तो टेस्ट वो दी रिपोर्ट आ जाएगी पता लग जाएगा ठीक है सर थैंक यू थैंक यू सर हजे ये ये ही मन के चले जाता है क्योंकि जिस तेजी ना the Supreme Court has agreed to hear the case relating to reservation of economically weaker sections category in need admissions for postgraduate medical courses on Wednesday after the central government sought an urgent hearing in the matter. Solicitor General Tushar Mehta appearing for the centre mentioned the matter before a bench of Chief Justice of India N.V. Ramana and Justices Surya Kant and Hima Kohli for urgent hearing. The Solicitor General sought an urgent hearing of the case in view of the protests by the resident doctors against the delay in need PG counseling. It concerns the EWS of society and resident doctors are protesting and their concerns are genuine, the Solicitor General added. On Monday, Meta mentioned the matter for urgent hearing before a bench headed by Justice D.Y. Chandrachut. Justice Chandrachut has said it would consult the CJI and see if a special bench can be constituted for hearing the case tomorrow. Today or the day after Wednesday, the case was slated for hearing on January 6. On December 31, the center filed an affidavit stating that it has decided to stick to the existing criteria of rupees 8 lakh annual income limit for determination of 10% EWS reservation with respect to the ongoing admissions to the NEET postgraduate courses. The center informed the Apex Court that an expert committee constituted by the government to reassess the criteria suggested that the existing criteria may be continued for ongoing admissions while the revised criteria suggested by the committee may be adopted from the next admission cycle. Changing the EWS criteria midway will lead to complications. The committee has opined while recommending the introduction of revised EWS criteria from the next academic year. This is all for now. Keep watching Hornbill TV.